Hello and welcome to the class. Dear students, today we are going to talk about storeroom management. First of all, the introduction. The Department of Physical Education or in charge of sports stores is interested to get the maximum service of the equipment. He, she must be well acquainted with the types of equipment apparatus that are in the store. First of all, let us talk about needs and location of storeroom management. For the effective and efficient storing of equipments and locations, the following points needs due consideration. Number one, it should have provision of proper ventilation for natural light as well as air. Otherwise, also it should be well lit and free of dampness. Two. The sports storerooms should be spacious enough to allow uninterrupted movement of larger sports item as well as sports store personnel. Number three, it should have long shelves, racks, stands, cages, frames, hangers, cupboards, boxes, containers, etc. to stack particular items of appropriate place. Number four, it must have a well-regulated entrance with double door and double lock system and well-guarded windows and ventilations. Number five, delicate and small articles should be kept in lockers or in safety boxes and taken care of more attentively. Number six, the sports goods of the same nature should be placed at a particular place. It should be kept in order so that issuing and replacing jobs are carried out smoothly or hassle-free. Number seven, the entire sports equipment and stores must be exposed to sunlight and natural air once or twice before the store is closed for a longer time. Number eight, articles which are made of leather or iron that are fungus or rust brawn must be stored carefully with provision of regular checkup. Appropriate germicides, insects, repellents, oil polish, etc. may be used to protect them before damage or decay. Some mechanism must be used or developed to have a moisture proof place for saving the bowls, subtles, rackets, shoes, etc. Since moisture is an arch enemy of many articles. Number nine. The storeroom should be dusted, swept, and cleaned regularly. Dust not only spoils equipments, it is also a very dangerous source of health hazards. Skin, eye, and lung allergies are caused easily because of it. Number 10. Any sign of red holes or otherwise their presence or presence of termite must be taken seriously. Any amount of negligence in this regard can cause irreparable damage to the stores as well as equipment. Number 11. Annual physical verification should be given to priority because it is the basic step towards the maintenance of stores, equipment and proper record of all kind of equipment. It also helps to remind you promptly the place of each and every item which can be found as when required instead of wasting time in search of a particular item. Number 12, unserviceable, damaged and worn out articles should not be scattered around but orderly placed at a designated place and disposed of as quickly as possible. Their presence for a longer time can create many problems like administrative, health, storekeeping, etc. Now let us talk about fixture and handling of equipment. The equipment of physical education should be kept according to the list and fixed planes. If they are kept properly, then we do not have to waste time in searching for them. While handling, the following things should be kept in mind. Number one, 
to keep the physical education equipments in the institution, there should be a separate room that is a storeroom. Number two, to keep the equipment, there should be proper almiras, racks and boxes. Number three, there should be different place for different equipment. Number four, value and glass articles should be kept in the almiras and boxes. Number five, wood, iron, rubber and synthetic fiberglass equipment should be kept separately. Number six, every equipment should be stamped with the institution's seal. Seven, the room in which the equipments are kept should be dry. There should not be any dampness in that room. Number eight, the room should not have white ant or rats. Nine, insecticides should be used in the room. Number 10, the equipment should be kept safe from mud and dust. 11, the equipment should be kept safe from the sun. 12, volleyball, basketball, handball and football should not be filled with air all the time. 13, the rubber equipment should be kept safe from the sun. 14, the uniform should be kept clean. 15, after using the equipment, it should be kept safely in the polythene bags. 16. If the equipment gets wet, it should be dried. Now coming to the issuing procedure. It is very delicate, systematic and important task which requires good amount of patience, skill attention, to carry out the job effectively and efficiently, expect for permanently fixed equipments such as goal post poles, basketball, volleyball, lawn tennis poles, football, etc. Special procedures are needed to store all other kind of equipment in spacious store furnished with racks, cupboards, boxes, containers, cages, shelves, hooks and hangers etc. In fact, there should be at least two big stores, one for the storage of brand new equipment and other for the equipment under daily use. Also, some space should be earmarked for stacking the worn out or condemned equipment. In the main store where the new or unused equipment are stored, students' entry should not be allowed or no other unauthorized person should enter. The substore or equipment issue room preferably should be an annex to the gymnasium or situated near the play fields. This will create the daily that is morning and evening activity needs. The equipment should be issued and received back in this store after the activity. It should be under the charge of a senior groundsman whose job is to issue equipment temporarily or otherwise and receiving or bringing it back to the store from the field area, checking its number, quality and conditions. The physical education teacher cannot take care of this job alone. A check of this equipment should be kept in separate register. The following things should be kept in mind while giving and taking the equipments. 1. While giving the equipment, the person name should be entered. 2. If the equipment is given to some outsider, then his full address should be noted down. 3. The signature of the person who takes the equipment should be taken. 4. When the equipment is taken back, its date and time should be entered in the register. 5. A separate register should be kept for students. 6. A separate register should be kept for teachers. 7. If anyone loses any equipment, he should be made to pay for it. Number 8. The storekeeper should ensure the safety of things. The following type of registers should be maintained while giving out the equipments. Serial number name of the person, name of the class, date, name of equipment, and signature. 
periodical stock checking. The receiving and stock takings are as important and serious functions as purchase and procurement of materials, equipments and supplies. The topic is discussed under two subheads. A. Receiving supplies. B. Stock taking. That is making entries of newly purchased materials in the stock register. Receiving supplies. The supplies of new materials and equipments should be received with utmost care and caution. To begin with, the articles should be counted to match the requirements as per the supply order and then evaluated for specifications, quality, trademark, originality and genuineness through comparisons with the samples retained. This is a very important step to check the cunning and clever suppliers who sow something and supply something else with the sole purpose of earning huge profits. One must be vigilant to guard against such cheap business trick and tactics. There are several ways to check the equipment for quality and standard such as 1. Indian Standard Institute that is ISI marked equipments generally would not require any testing. 2. In case of newly introduced brand of article or equipment, the bulk purchase may be restricted to a few of its pieces until have been practically tested for quality. Example, hockey sticks, cricket bats, bamboo javelins, etc. The coaches and senior players may be involved in the testing procedure. 3. Brand used in the past may also not require any testing. 4. Authentication of official use of the material in a standard national or international championships. Many dealers and manufacturers use the tag or label approved and official for certain products that is basketball, football etc. Which means the said equipment meets all official specification that is weight, shape, color, design, dimensions etc. and certified for official use of certain standard championship only. 5. Specialist, experts, technicians may be requested to test, check at random important items in full or parts for quality and specification Example, local made furniture, refrigerators, air conditioners, trade mills, jumping pit and apparatus, etc. 6. The supplier is then given a receipt of equipment receiving as per the supply order. B. Stock taking, that is making entries of newly purchased material in the stock register. After receiving complete supply of the equipment, each item is needed to be entered in the stock register or ledger. Now coming to model stock register. 1. Date of purchase 2. Source from where purchased 3. Bill number with date 4. Rate per item or pair or box or piece etc 5 quality that is numbers kilograms meters etc 6 cumulative quantity that is previous and present 7 issued 8 date 9 to whom 10 balance 11 remarks Dear students, after all the discussions we had today, we can conclude that the sports goods of the same nature should be placed at a particular place. It should be kept in order so that issuing and replacing jobs are carried out smoothly or hassle-free. Annual physical verification should be given top priority because it is the basic step towards the maintenance of stores, equipments and proper record of all kind of equipment. 
It also helps to remind you promptly the place of each and every item which can be found as and when required instead of wasting time in search of a particular item. The equipment should be issued and received back in this store after the activity. It should be under the charge of a senior groundsman whose job is to issue equipments temporarily or otherwise and receiving or bringing it back to the store from the filled area, checking its number, quality and conditions. The physical education teacher cannot take care of this job alone. A check of this equipment should be kept in separate register.